Good morning, everybody. Let us uh, open our meeting with a song, and then uh, after the song, we'll open our memorial service this morning with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace at this time to give you great honour and praise to your holy name. To thank you, loving Father, that we can indeed call you our Father who art in heaven. And we praise you and we thank you, loving God, for all the blessings of life that you give us. We thank you, loving Father, for your amazing love, for your compassion and for your grace. But we also thank you, loving Father, for the trials that you send us to test us, to prove our love to you, to show us, loving Father, that you are indeed the most important thing in our life. And so as we go through these ups and downs, we, we thank you and we praise you. We ask you, loving Father, to always be close to us. We ask you, loving Father, to strengthen us and encourage us in these difficult times especially be with those that are in struggling and difficult circumstances at this time. Be with those that are sick and that are weak, that are, that are aged and are, and, and are frail. Be with those, loving Father, that don't have the, the companionship and the company of family and loved ones around them. Strengthen them and encourage them, loving Father. Be with those that are, not, that are in isolation, that are not close to people, people that can care and support and help them. Be with all of those, loving Father. Be with, especially be with those that are sick, those that are suffering. We pray, loving Father, that you put your loving, caring, healing and comforting arm around them. We offer our prayer through your Son, even our Lord Jesus Christ, our King and our friend. Amen. Well, our brother Glenn's going to uh, 
lead us in the words of exhortation this morning. And just as an introduction to his exhortation, I just want to read from Matthew chapter 25 and just verses 14 to 30. And it's the parable of the talents that our brother Glenn is going to speak to. And this is what we read commencing in verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several abilities. And straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them another five talents. And likewise he that had received the two talents, he also gained two more. And he that had received the one talent went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, you gave unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained five more, before, I have gained five more beside these five talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. For thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou gavest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that which is thine. His Lord answered him and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have at least put my money into the exchanges, and then at my coming I would have received my money with interest. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he has. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. For there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so with that reading as an introduction... Now give a very warm welcome to our brother Glenn to lead us in the words of exhortation. Brother Glenn. Good morning, everyone. I do hope you're very well this morning. By way of our short ex exhortation, we're going to look at a very well-known story from Matthew chapter 25. I'm sure you know and heard of this one. Do you remember the parable of the talents that Jesus spoke? Well, we're going to have a look at this, and what I want to do is ask you one question before we start. Just think about this. How well do you know Jesus? And the reason I want to ask you that is because this story is all about how three servants knew the master of the house. You might remember he calls them all together in Matthew chapter 25. If you go to verse 14... We read, the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. Then straight away he took his journey. So Jesus paints this picture of a man right, who's in charge of, let's think of it like perhaps a, a big farm or a a big agricultural estate. There he is out in the rural lands and he's, he's got a big plot of land and he's got all these people that work for him. And he's got to go away. So what he decides to do, he thinks to himself, I have to leave all of everything that's precious to me. I have to leave in charge with a few people. And he calls 
three servants together. Now you have a look in that verse, it says, He calls the servants and delivered unto them his goods. These are his goods. So if you think they're his, he's entrusting them to his servants, it means he will want them back. So just if you put yourself into this, um, this verse now, these are people that have been called to be servants of the master. We have been called by God, haven't we, to be his children. And he has delivered unto us what's precious to him. Most precious is, what is it? It's the word. We've got the word in front of us that is most precious to him. We are precious to him. In fact, he was so precious a we that he was prepared to offer the life of his only son. The other thing to note too is remember he gave everyone a talent. You will meet some people that have more talents than others, more abilities than others. But you know what? The important lesson is that everyone got one. This morning, think about what you do with your God-given talent. If you want to read an extra verse, you go away and read 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9 because it talks all about you being called for God's purpose. So there he is, he hands out these talents and off he leaves. You notice he doesn't tell them how, what to do with their talents, he just hands them out and he leaves. And the first two servants, the one that had five and the one that had two, they get to work, it says. They rush off, they get to work and they're trading. We see words like trading and words like gain. So there they are, they take what is precious, they put it to work, they put their best foot forward. Why? Because they want to please the master. They want to take what he has given and entrusted um, to them. They want to make something more of it and they want to give it back to him when he returns. You might be able to see how we fit into this. But what does the man with one talent do? Well, we know that he goes and he buries it in the ground. That might remind you. Do you remember someone in the Old Testament that buried what was God's in the ground? Well, that was Achan. Maybe Jesus was thinking about Achan when he told this very parable. So he takes and he puts it in the ground. And after a long time, in verse 19, the Lord of the, 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 the master comes back and those that have made five times more talents, he brings his talents to him and says, Master, here is um, what you've given to me. I have gained more for you. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. He said, I will make you a ruler over many things. In one verse, he goes from a servant to a ruler. Right, to being in charge of a few things, it says, to being in charge of many things, all in one verse. The same thing happens with the man that had two talents who makes two more. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then comes the man with one. What happens? He comes and he says, I know you, master, and I know you're a hard man. And because I think, which wasn't true, as you know, but because I think you're a hard man, you know what? He says, I was afraid. And I took what you gave me and I put it in the ground. The sad thing about this story is that what the man thought he knew about the master drove his actions. He thought the master was a mean and hard man, so it made him afraid. And we know that how the story ends. He was thrown out, wasn't he? So I just want you to think about this morning. How well do you know Jesus? Do we think he's a mean or a hard man that he will come and judge where he's not um, sown, as this man said? No. We know that he loves us, that he was prepared to lay down his life for us. And that's what we want to think about this morning as we take the emblems. Have a good morning. Thanks, uh, Brother Glenn. Uh, beautiful and fitting words as they lead us to partake of the bread and the wine and and just in the very next chapter in 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 matthew chapter 26 we read these words when jesus met with his disciples for the last supper and it says this in in verse 26 of matthew 26 and as they were eating jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many 
for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so before they partook of the bread and before they partook of the wine, Jesus offered prayers. And let us follow that example and offer thanks for the bread. Loving Heavenly Father, we once again come to you to continue our praise and our worship of you, to continue our thanks, to offer praises to you, to say thank you, God, for the amazing, redeeming work that you have done for us through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And as we take this bread, and as we eat of this bread, the symbol of your Son's life, we see in this bread your Son's life, given and broken in perfect obedience unto us and so we thank you for this bread and we pray loving father that as we reflect on the example of our lord and our savior jesus christ that we will be more like him in the days that remain until he returns so thank you for this thing these things and we offer our thanks through jesus christ's name amen and so it's recorded that jesus took the bread and he broke it and it says that he took the bread and gave it to them and said, take, eat this, for this is my body, which is broken for you. So let us give thanks for the cup. Once again, loving Father, we come to you to praise your great and holy name that as we now prepare to partake of this cup, we see in this wine the symbol of your son's shed blood. And we pray, loving Father, that as we look at that shed blood, we, we know, loving Father, that it is we who have sinned and not your son. And so we pray, loving Father, that you will look down upon us with mercy and compassion and with grace and forgive us for our sins. Wash us clean, loving Father, in the blood of your son. For we pray, loving Father, that we might be able to stand before you in that great day when your Son has returned and we drink this cup anew with him in your kingdom. So we offer our thanks for this cup through Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the new covenant or the new promise which is shed for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Well, once again, thanks uh, very much, uh, everybody, for joining with us. Uh, we're going to close with a song and uh, then I'm going to ask Brother Funo to close our service with prayer. Uh, but before we go, um, uh, please uh, keep yourself safe. Uh, things are, are, are quite uh, serious and, and certainly the, the virus is uh, causing a lot of worry, a lot of heartache, a lot of concern uh, where you are in, in, in South Africa. So, so please uh, keep up your social distancing, uh, keep up your hygiene. Uh, especially keep up your relationships and your contact with one another keep supporting each other through through your phones and through the internet so that we know that everybody's being uh, looked after and being cared for uh, continue to pray for one another uh, near and far um, and and just please keep safe and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next sunday god willing so uh, god be with you till we meet again god bless
Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord. Sponga kulo. Kogo snigezi zilako. From a brother way to. Bautungwe li watu na mantla. Sakela yungos la mazi suwa zile na mtlanya. Iwa suwa kini nti zwen zetu. Na se ingunden zetu. Kakulu gazi yungos na ngalumzu si kumbula. Abaza na banyengi. Abanyo yungos ba tzala nzima. Gengale koronavaras. Aupine yungos ube ganyena hapu bakine. Eli tizu lako mtla ubu mbuso wako. Kiyo bako nukutlo kuningi mtlabini. Kiyo bako nukutula. Etuwa yungos we can wait for. Uku mkani bako fi mtlabini. Bawa tonu mwele bawa tona mandla. Vezi intu uza ambage nje. If mawo gusle. Mawo buisi nkose tu Jesu Christu mtlabini. Sakitela kekonke lwa kwe kamene lisi. Mfele tu Jesu Christu. Amen.